um, base coated my canvas background. I just did white and then added a little bit of blue just for fun because it's supposed to be beachy. And I've already traced on a little bit of a pumpkin shape just to have something uh, to reference. And I just used a watercolor pencil for that. Uh, you don't even have to do it if you don't want to. Thank you, Patsy. Hey, Linda, how are you? So I am gonna start with some blue because we're gonna do a beachy pumpkin. And this is seafoam blue. I've already got some on my palette, so I'm just gonna use what I have. And I also have white right here. I'm gonna add a little bit more white. Hey, AJ, glad you're here, glad you made it. And I have a teeny smidge of raw umber for effect. So we're just gonna get started, okay? I'm glad you made it. Thanks, Michelle. So I'm just gonna use just a flat. This is a, I don't have anything on it, but it's just a flat quarter inch brush. You can use something a little bit bigger if you want to, but since I have smaller little pumpkin rounds, I am just going to, uh, hey Judy. I did, is that not hilarious? Oh my goodness. So that this is why I don't get a manicure. I don't get a manicure because I pick. Pick, 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 pick. <laughs> and I picked it right off, yes. <laughs> okay, so I am just gonna start with my blue. I am gonna just dip into my blue and I'm gonna start filling in my little bits of pumpkin. I'm gonna start right here. And I'm not, e guys, I'm not even going to like fill it in completely. Just gonna get a little bit of blue color on there. This is that seafoam color. Just a little bit. These are quick and fast little pumpkins. So I'm gonna fill in that middle section, that main section you usually start with. Yay, Julie, I'm glad you're here. So I'm not even gonna completely fill it in. You see how I left the middle a little bit bare right here? I'm just gonna leave it bare. Then I'm gonna go over here and just give myself, I've got a little too much on my brush, a little place to start so I know where my sections are. You know how pumpkins are, have those sections. So I am gonna just fill those in. You know, here's the deal. Right or wrong, I paint how I paint. I am a self-taught artist. I did not go to art school. My dad and mom would have loved for me, for me to do that, but I did not. I had a bunch of babies instead. And uh, I'm self-taught, so I paint the way I wanna paint and the way I learned to paint. And if it's wrong, then it's wrong, but it works for me. So glad you're here, Lisa. Thanks for showing up. So I'm just kind of outlining my pumpkin sections right now, I'm not doing anything special. This is seafoam blue. And I'm just going right over that line I, draw, I drew on with my watercolor pencil. Just wanna make sure that's covered up nicely. So now, uh, the way I've done this, it allows me to still see the shape of each of my sections. So now I'm just gonna come in. I'm gonna add, Leah, I have two of my own and my husband has two. So between us, we have four and three grandchildren and one on the way. So we are a growing family. So I'm still using my dirty brush from the Seafoam Blue and I'm just gonna dip into a little bit of white just get some white on my brush and then I'm just gonna come in here and scrub in a little bit of that dirty white on each section of my pumpkin just to give them some dimension I'm not doing anything fancy these are this is not fancy art this is fun art so I'm just gonna do that I'm just gonna fill that in Right? Art's supposed to be fun. Art's therapeutic. It's supposed to be fun. So don't take it too serious. Oh girl, this is all, I'm all right-handed. 
It's just because I flipped the camera. It looks like I'm painting left-handed. <laughs> I can't do anything with my left hand, sister. Okay, so I'm just coming into those blank spots and kind of filling in with uh, the white mixed with the blue that was still on my brush so that I can kind of still see my pumpkin sections. Yeah, the, the, the camera is flipped. I flip it so you guys can see, so we can both see the right direction. You guys can see it not upside down and I don't have to paint upside down because I'm not that good. Trust you me. Okay, so now I've just filled it in with the white. I keep bumping the table, I'm sorry. Ow, 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 ow. So I have filled it in, I've kind of outlined it with my blue, and then I filled in the center with my white, mixed in with my blue on my paintbrush, so it doesn't come off as pure white. So that's pretty much it, except we're gonna add a little bit of brown just to give it some shading. So I'm gonna rinse that off of my brush. I'm actually gonna get a little bit of a different brush because this one's just a little bit nicer. It's a 3 8 inch flat. Uh, I don't buy fancy brushes either. Hey, Melanie. I don't buy fancy brushes either because I'm messy and I leave I leave them sitting in water and all that. So I just go to Hobby Lobby and buy brushes when they're on sale. So uh, that's how I roll. So I'm just gonna dip just the corner. This is kind of important, so I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. I'm gonna take this brush and I'm gonna dip just the teeny corner. I wanna see if you can see that. I'm just find the camera. Just the teeny corner into my brown. Do you see how, what a small amount of paint I have there? And then I'm gonna take it and kind of offload it onto my little plate until it starts kind of running through the rest of my brush. So instead of making a straight line, it's kind of an ombre effect. Does that make sense? So now I'm gonna come over here and outline my little pumpkin sections. So I'm gonna come here and just hit it just a little bit on each section. That was a little too much, so I'm just gonna blend it because there is no boo-boos. I'm gonna add a little bit of white. There's no boo-boos in this. It's all okay. So we're just gonna shadow each little section just a little bit, just so you can see um, the different shapes of the um, I don't know what those are called, just pumpkin sections. The little circular parts. So I'm offloading on my, onto my palette and I'm gonna come here and where this one is, this middle section, I'm gonna come right along the side and just add a tiny bit of brown. Okay, and you can smear that in, rub it in a little bit if it's too much. But I'm not micromanaging it at all. I just want to get a little bit of color on there. And then I come around the bottom of that little nubbin as well. So all we're doing is accentuating those sections. All right, we'll go again. Get a little more. Oops, I got a little crazy on that one. I think Pam's in Little Rock. I'm offloading again. I'm just getting a teeny smidge on the corner of my brush and I'm offloading and I'm gonna come back here and do the same thing for this next section. I'm just gonna take my brush, lay it flat a little, bring it around. I didn't get enough paint because that's how I roll. Get a little more. And I'm just outlining those sections the rinse, come back. And we'll take it to the bottom a little. We're not gonna worry about it too much because we're gonna have some shells and some glass and all sorts of pretty stuff there. So I'm just gonna continue to just give it a little bit of shading here and there. I'm gonna come over here and shade this side too. This side right here, just a little shadow effect. Then we're gonna work on our cute little stem. And I'm debating whether we should add a third grade leaf or not. 
she's not in the group anymore. She's not, <laughs> she's not uh, on the page anymore, so it'd just be vindictive, wouldn't it? I can't be friends with you roll tap people to <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my goodness. Yes, you can. It's just football. Okay, so I'm about done. I'm going to just kind of step back and look at it a little bit. I might add just a smidge here and there. I don't want to spend too much time. This is not fine art. We're not trying to make anything magical. It's just fun and whimsical and beachy. Okay, so now I, <laughs> y'all are funny. Oh, D, who's your team, honey? <laughs> so now we're gonna paint the little stem. So this is cute as it can be. Oh, and it was so simple. Do you guys agree? It was so simple. We just outlined in our sea foam. We filled in with our white just to give it some variance of color. We're gonna let this brown shading dry while we do our, hey Rhonda, while we do our uh, stem, and then we're gonna do a little dry brush on the top. Look at all you football folks. Go LSU, my husband's an LSU fan. Yeah, we want to <laughs> That's right, that's right. Okay, so I'm gonna take some more brown on just the tip of my brush, and I'm gonna just fill in this stem. Nothing fancy, just kind of making a little bit of an oval for the top of the stem. And then we'll just fill this sucker in. We're gonna bring, we're gonna bring, I need to add some more to my palette. We're gonna bring it down into our pumpkin because if you look at a pumpkin, you, you will see that the stem kind of breaches down into the um, sections of the pumpkin. I think I'm almost out of brown here. So we're gonna fill that in. Let me get a little more brown. Hello, Dottie. Look at all you football girls. Rima, roll tide is, I am an Alabama football fan, uh, football fan, Alabama, Tuscaloosa, and that is their, that's their thing, roll tide. All right, I'm gonna fill in with the brown. What's a roll tide? Roll Tide's a big elephant running all over them LSU folks. <laughs> Sorry, Connie. Couldn't resist. Their mascot's an elephant, and I know the story of Roll Tide, but I can't remember it right this minute. <laughs> Don't knock while I'm watching Art Shattered. That's funny. So I'm just kind of base coating in a little bit of brown for our stem. And I'm gonna bring it down into my pumpkin a little bit because that's how, that's how it works. So I'm now I'm gonna dip into a little bit of white just right there on my dirty brush. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to our stem just for fun. Because we can't have it just solid brown, can we? All right, so there's our stem. I don't know if you can see it very well. Let me find the camera. So there's our stem, no big deal. Just a, just a little bit of brown and a little bit of white on top. Nothing to it. <laughs> and the football trash talk. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Melanie. I'm glad you like the art and the trash talk. <laughs> Roll of toilet paper and a box of Tide detergent. That's funny. That's funny. I need to do an Alabama elephant. That would be so much fun. I think uh, Dee, one of the girls in my Shattered Circle group, is actually doing just that. Because she, she literally asked me a couple of days ago what color gray for Big Al. And I never even looked to tell her. So now I'm going to be in trouble. Okay, so here I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I rinsed off my brush and I'm going to get a lot of the water out because I want it to be a little bit dry. And I'm going to dip in to my white and then I want to offload some of it. I just want to have a little bit on my brush. And what I'm going to do is come in with on top of my white and just add a little bit of dry brushing white into my sections just to give it a little more highlight. Not a lot, just a smidgy. 
Yeah, we're talking about college football. <laughs> so just highlight some right there in the center with your white. And then we are done painting. What? What? We're finished already? We're not finished playing. We're just finished painting. So as a true cook would, I am prepared. We're going to put this one in the oven, and this one is done. <laughs> How do you like that? How do you like them apples? So what we're going to focus on for this cute little blue pumpkin is something, a smidgey, <laughs> is something beachy. Because beach people have fall too sometimes. I'm not sure on the East Coast they do. I'm not sure they have fall anywhere else. But here's what we're going to do. It is a pretty pumpkin. I love it. We're, we didn't even add that third grade leaf. But we are going to add this fabulous starfish. Love it. And we're going to add, I have some shells. Wow. I have some shells that we're going to throw in right here. And I have some crushed shell too. This is like crushed shell that you can get at Michael's in a little bag in the floral section. It's called Mother of Pearl and it comes in like a, maybe a 16 ounce bag. And I'm almost out, you can see. I need to make a run for the border and get me some more. But I'm gonna add a few little bits of this crushed shell around the bottom of my piece and it wouldn't be complete if I didn't add some glass now would it so this is crush classic it's just the clear it does have a little bit of aqua tint to it uh, it's not crystal clear so I am going to add a little bit of glass Cause that's how we roll up here in Art Shattered. Can't be making art with no glass. We'll just add some glass here and there. And let's see what else I have at the table. I have another little small bag of shells. So I might just reach in and grab a few. Why do I have to put on several coats on my canvas to make the paint not see through? I paint it white before I start. I don't know, it might be your colors. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but I'm gonna go after, I'm gonna say Ciola. Is that your name, hun? Uh, it might be the paint you're using. Are you, I'm just using craft store paints for mine. I don't know what color or what uh, brand paint you're using, uh, but if you'll let me know, I'll see if I can help you out. Where do you purchase glass? Patricia, I actually sell glass on my website. For the most part, you can purchase it on eBay or on um, different websites, but you have to buy it in bulk. Um, there you go, Agnes. Agnes is the queen of painting, so she can sh tell you, add a little white to your paint. Um, what was I saying? I, I got squirrely. Oh, on my website, Patricia, I sell it by the pound. So you can't, pretty much can't find it by the pound anywhere else. So my website, if somebody will type it in, I would so appreciate that. It's artshattered.com. And I think I have about 20 different colors. So I found, I have a bag full of these tiny little baby shells. So I'm just kind of tossing a few in here and there just for a little accent. And I think we're done. What do you think? Is this not cute? Super, super beachy cute. Hey, Robin. Thank you, Agnes. Appreciate you. So I think we're ready for resin. Who is ready for resin? I'm gonna scooch this up just a little bit so I have some space to uh, resin a little, or to mix my resin. I use Art Resin exclusively. I'm having a hard time locating my camera. Okay, I have to turn it this way. <laughs> I am using Art Resin exclusively. Now, I have used Art Resin for about four years now. The resin I used previous to this uh, was very 
uh, ha it was hazmat. It was very caustic. It had VOCs and it would turn yellow after a certain amount of time as well. So I started using art resin about four or five years ago and I have not had that problem at all. I have not had the problem at all. So art resin is made in the U.S. It is not a hazmat resin. It has non-VOC and no BPA. So it's, it is actually food safe. So I actually make a lot of little um, cheese trays and I use art resin on those because it is not it is food safe for you to use and I actually put art resin on my countertops. I really need to do a, a little tour of my house before we move to show you my beautiful countertops that I created and poured art resin on the top. So we are using art resin. It's a two-part epoxy and it's a 50-50 mix. So we're gonna use 50% resin and 50% hardener. And for this little baby piece, we're only gonna mix up Oh, I don't think we need four ounces, but we're going to mix four because I have another piece of art to resin. So we're going to, hey, Lisa, how are you? So we're going to go ahead and mix four ounces because I think this will take about two. Yeah, this bottle goes a long way too. This is um, a 32 ounce kit and I, and I still have about a third of it left and I've done about... Well, I did about five this size pieces of art yesterday. Oh, Leah, I will do that. Maybe one day this week I'll go live at the house. And yeah, don't waste time with any other resin. I'll go live at the house and show you my countertops because they are lovely. So I have a plastic cup here. Can you guys see my cup? I have a plastic cup here that I am going to mix my resin in. But first, I am going to do the right thing and put my gloves on because even if it's not hazmat, you don't want this sticky stuff on your hands because it is sticky. You put your hair up, put your gloves on and protect. Yay, Richard, yay! Did you get lost in the other, uh, in the ether world? <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Richard. Okay, so I am going to mix four ounces, which means Four ounces total. I'll, I'll mix two ounces of hardener and two ounces of resin in one cup. But I'm going to tell you this right now. If you're new to resin, do not mix in one cup. You're going to want to have two cups so that you can mix equally. I have been doing resin for about 10 years, so I'm really good at this. But I would encourage you to use two cup method if you are a uh, a beginner okay so you would put two ounces of hardener in one cup and two ounces of resin in the other that way if you over pour one you can fix it before you mix it together because once you have it together it's gonna be hard 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 I Linda I'm your huckleberry uh, it'd be hard to fix so I'm gonna mix two ounces I'm gonna go ahead and pour two ounces of resin in my cup so I'm going to have to be quiet and hold my mouth right while I pour because I might over pour if I don't. Have to be silent. And pour slow too because it grows on you. Once you get a little bit of resin in your cup and it gets close to your two ounce mark or whatever ounce you're doing, you want to stop ahead of time because it will continue to kind of grow it's because it's thick like molasses. So we're almost there. I need just a little teeny drop to get there. So we're going to pour it and we'll give it a second to grow. Maybe one more smidge. And we're good. Okay, so now what I always do, I, I just poured this one. So what I always do is take the top, put it on, and put this way out of my reach. Because if you pour two ounces of this, and then set it down, get distracted, and come back and pour two more ounces of this. Your piece is never going to dry. So always put one out of your reach. So now we're going to do... <laughs> I'm your uncle here. Do you like that? So now we're going to do the hardener, or the resin. This was the hardener. So I'm going to pour two ounces right on top of my two ounces. But use two cups if you're new. Can't stress that enough. 
And once I get close to my four ounce line, I am gonna stop and let it grow. Okay, so we're gonna stop there. We're gonna let it grow. Yeah, don't put the wrong top on either. That's why you only wanna have one accessible to you. If you put the wrong top on, you're never, at, oh, look how perfect that is. Look, look at me going. If you put the wrong cap on the wrong bottle, you're not gonna get that bottle open again. Okay, so I have four ounces total, and now we have to mix. Art resin, you mix for three minutes, and while we mix, I'm gonna flip you back up so you can look at me upside down. Hey, hey! <laughs> That's funny. I, always, I usually like to stick my ponytail upside down so you can see. So we are gonna mix for three minutes. House paint cups are easier than automotive. Ma um, Richard, I keep wanting to call you Madison because that's just how we roll. I buy these from a company called The Paint Store. They're online, it's thepaintstore.com. You can see the measurements really easy. And these are like 20 cents a piece. And I reuse them until I can't reuse them anymore. So it's very economical. Okay, somebody time me. Rima, are you here? Somebody time me. We have to mix this for three minutes. So we're gonna stir, 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 and we're gonna scrape the sides every few seconds and stir. Now you wanna stir slow. You don't wanna whip it because the harder you mix and the more you whip it, the uh, more air bubbles that get incorporated into your resin, and you don't wanna fight that fight. There are gonna be air bubbles, but if you get a whole bunch in there, it kinda, it's hard to get all of them out. So mix slow and scrape your sides and be patient for three minutes. Rima's gonna tell us when we're done. So, so now I'm gonna flip myself back upside down. Boom, I think, I think, there we go. And let's resin. Let's get ready to resin. Okay, I, I went too far because I need to move my piece a little bit towards me so I can reach it. Okay, who's asked a question? After you finish putting on the resin, Julie, this will sit and dry. It takes 12 hours for it to dry completely, 72 hours to cure. But I will, I will finish this tonight, and it is 8.35, 8.40. And tomorrow when I come in, I usually get to the studio around 10 o'clock, and when I come back tomorrow, I'll be able to touch it. Okay, it'll be fine, but you wouldn't want to ship it for at least 72 hours. So we are going to get ready to resin, and I'm going to kind of go through how I like to resin. And I do my resin this way because I don't like to waste, because resin's not cheap. That 32-ounce kit costs 50 bucks, and so I'm a cheapskate, so I'm going to do it where I can save as much as I can and not waste a lot of resin. But before I do, I almost forgot, I have to elevate my canvas. And the reason we elevate our canvas is so that if we do so happen to get a few drips, I wanna make sure you guys can still see that. Can you see the whole thing? Can't tell. Give me some thumbs up if you can see the whole thing. I'm a, my iPad's lagging behind. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we elevate the canvas so that if so happened resin runs down the sides, it doesn't glue itself to our, our table. Okay, so we have our table protected and uh, plastic is what you want to use if you're working on your kitchen table at home. Don't use something porous. Um, so we've elevated it so that if resin runs down the sides, it doesn't glue our canvas to our table. And you also want to make sure that your whatever you're using as a riser, that it's tucked up under the canvas as well. Hang on, I'm trying to play catch up. You can tape your bottom. Yes, you can take a uh, blue painter's tape and run it along the side of your bottom as well to keep drips from forming on the bottom of your canvas. But I'm gonna show you how to, I am gonna pick it up, Lynn. Um, I'm gonna show you how to 
uh, resin your canvas without getting all that stuff running down the sides because that drives me crazy and for me it's a waste of resin okay so before we get started Lynn reminded me that I am gonna lift off my cute little starfish because starfish are really really porous and I'm gonna tell you why I'm removing him right now I'm gonna go ahead and apply my resin to my glass and then I'm gonna rub it out all through the rest of my canvas just with my hands. I don't wanna put it on the top of my starfish because it soaks up the resin and then you have to add a lot of resin and a lot of resin and a lot of resin because it does start to discolor it and then it looks ugly. And we don't want our starfish to look ugly so <coughs> excuse me so we're gonna remove it and then we'll put a good bit of resin right here where it goes and then we'll just set it down inside that puddle of resin thanks for reminding me Lynn I would have figured it out the minute I started dumping resin then I'd have been mad at myself okay so here is what I'm gonna do <coughs> I'm gonna start with my glass always because that is where uh, <coughs> we want to get the most resin and that's where it's important to drizzle so I'm just gonna get a little bit of resin on my popsicle stick and I'm just gonna drizzle it right over the top of all of my little decorative elements very minimally you don't want to flood it because if you flood it it will uh, shift the glass and if you get too much resin then it'll start running down the sides Okay, so the, the key is to work from the top down so that you're putting resin on your top pieces and that resin is running down through all those pieces and adhering everything together onto your canvas. If we just dumped resin right in the middle and let it spread, then all the stuff that's laying on the very top would, um, wouldn't stick. You, when you came back tomorrow, you, it would just be dumped into the ground. You could pre-seal the starfish if you wanted to, but yeah, I never am that organized. I think you could probably spray it with an acrylic sealer, but yeah, I'm never that organized, so I always just lift it off and then add it back as at, when I get the resin all dumped in. So I am putting all my resin, making sure all of my glass bits and all my shell bits are covered. And I'm pretty good, I think I'm done. And I'm going, it's kind of close to the edge down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna micromanage that a little bit because I don't want it running down the bottom and making little bumps. So I'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of Smooth that resin out so it doesn't run down the back side. All right, so all of my glass is covered, okay? So I'm gonna add a good bit right here where my starfish is gonna go and spread that out. And I'm gonna add all over the flat parts You, you, Robin, you do it by kind of micromanaging how much resin you use, okay? If you use too much resin and it, you know, it's self level, so it's gotta go somewhere, it's gonna, put, it's gonna run over your edges. So if you're struggling with getting resin, with resin um, running over your sides, so you see that I'm just put it, I put a little bit on the flat surface of my canvas and I'm just using my fingers to run it to the edge. But if you have a ton of resin on your canvas, it's gonna automatically wanna run over the edge. So you need to maybe pour a little less resin on your canvas if you're having it run down your sides. Cause you don't want that. Okay, so it's all covered. I'm gonna kinda scrape some off. Now I'm gonna take my clean hand. I don't want to pick my starfish up with this hand because it has resin all over it, but I'm going to pick up my starfish and I'm going to place him right there in the middle of that little puddle of resin I just made. And now it's just fantastic. So I'm going to micromanage this. Yes, Christina, it is art resin. I'll show you the bottle. It's two part resin, so there are two bottles, but here is what the bottle looks like. It's artresin.com. 
And you actually, they sell it in Hobby Lobby too, in small, I think the biggest one they have is like an eight ounce kit. So we are completely covered knowing how much to mix. Gee, that just really takes practice. That really takes practice. You know, I've been doing this for a very, very long time. So, um, and sometimes I get it wrong. The key is to mix maybe a little more than you think, uh, and then always have a spare piece ready in case you've made too much. Always have something sitting at the side where if you've made too much, you can pour it on your extra piece. So yes, aluminum tape will work as well, Agnes. I think I saw that a second ago. Oh, Elizabeth, that's terrible, love. I'm so sorry. <coughs> Okay, so we are done with our resin and we used just almost two ounces, a little less than two ounces for this eight by eight canvas. They do have 32 ounces, awesome sauce. So I'm gonna take my gloves off and I literally meant to go and buy a kitchen torch today because I know that when I pick this up and show it to you, some of you guys who are new are gonna be intimidated, but don't be. This is the Mac Daddy butane torch or propane torch, okay? You do not have to use this. This is just what I have because I started doing countertops, okay? I started doing large pieces of art in countertops and this was more conducive for that. You do not have to use this. You can use a heat gun or you can use one of those little bitty baby torches like a kitchen creme brulee torch. You don't have to use a big one. And the torch is for popping any bubbles, okay? So we're gonna use our torch. I know, don't, don't be intimidated. You don't have to use it. I prefer it as well. So what we're gonna do is use this to pop any of the bubbles that are in our resin. But here's what you have to remember. Guys, seriously, pay attention. This starfish doesn't have resin, okay? So you're gonna have to be very careful with your torch not to burn your starfish because you're gonna be upset with yourself if you do. You can even still at this point just remove it and we're gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna remove it. I'm gonna put it on a piece of plastic. I'm gonna remove it so we don't run the risk. I'll just sit it right there on my paper, on my paper towel. And we're gonna light this baby up and let's talk about the torch. Okay, so I fired up my torch and right now I'm just running the heat from the torch, not the flame. You don't want the flame to touch your art piece. You just want the heat from the flame and you want, see how I'm moving it constantly? You can see my hand is in constant motion. You don't want to stop, you don't want to go slow, you don't want the flame to touch your piece. That's all you need is just a few seconds. <sighs> don't ever touch that tip either. That's hot. That will burn you and you will be sad. But you just need to keep your torch moving and you keep your flame off of your piece and you'll be fine. And it just takes a few quick seconds. So now I'm going to put this back so we made sure we didn't burn it. And he will stick really nicely because I've got a nice pool of resin there. And he, we are done. Oh my goodness, guys. Is this not super, super cute? I love it. This is our beachy pumpkin.